Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I aim to show you the best lightweight travel cameras, the best drone for a van, and why you should forget about a gimbal. Also, why you don't need a PC or a MacBook to edit videos. If you want to buy any of the items I show, then there is a link in the description below where you can find full details. For those who just want the quick facts, I use a Sony RX100 Mark 7, a DJI Osmo Action, an iPhone XX Max, a DJI Mavic Air 2 with three batteries, a carbon fiber Manfrotto B3 tripod, a Rode VideoMic Pro shotgun, a Rode Video Micro shotgun, and I have two sets of Rode Wireless Go mics. The links to all of these and more are in the description below. Continue watching for an explanation of why I use these cameras. They say the best camera to have is the one you will have with you. For most people, including me, that's my smartphone and I use an iPhone XX Max. Don't fall into the trap in thinking that you need lots of expensive equipment because you don't. It's far more important that you understand how to use that camera well and also the simple rules of photography and videography. Now, some of my equipment is expensive, but that's only because I need to do more than I can achieve just with the iPhone. If you want to see the quality that an iPhone will produce, then take a look at our Spain series, because that was shot predominantly using my 10X Max. If you find the following content useful, then please hit the like button and consider subscribing for more. So let's list the benefits of using an iPhone. Number one, you always have it with you. Number two, they are really easy to use as long as you know how to lock the focus and adjust the exposure. Tap the screen and hold on your subject. Now slide with one finger up or down the screen to either make it darker or lighter. Number three, it's really easy to play back what you just captured to see that it's okay. Number four, it's really easy to share straight from your phone to social media. Number five, an iPhone is a fully contained system and it's possible to complete the entire movie just using one or two apps on the phone. As long as your video is fairly simple, then there are two main apps that I would recommend. The first would be iMovie and the second, which is more complex but more powerful, is a piece of software called LumaFusion. iMovie is free, but you can become trapped and it's quite simple in its capability. LumaFusion is an inexpensive app, but it's the one I use to produce my films. Number six, it's pretty good at eye tracking and that ensures that a person's face remains in focus. I'm sure there are a load more strengths but the final one I will mention is low light performance. When the light is falling, then I reach for the iPhone and put away my more expensive cameras. Here's a shot from my iPhone and you may think it's a little bit grainy, but when you consider the only light available in a completely dark room is one candle, it's doing a pretty good job. Okay, that's the positives. What about the limitations? The biggest one is it lacks a zoom lens. Yes, I know iPhones have a small zoom capability and they can also do digital zoom for going closer, but I urge you never to make use of digital zoom. If you do, then your video quality will suffer if you upload to YouTube. I certainly do not recommend buying any attachable zoom lens for use with an iPhone. 
Another limitation with iPhones is that they are very poor when the conditions are windy. You can attach microphones to an iPhone and they are able to make use of a thing called a dead cat which stops most of the wind noise. Before I leave the iPhones then let's mention gimbals. The one on the right is my gimbal for my iPhone and the one on the left is my gimbal for my pocket zoom which I'm going to talk about next. I'm going to be totally honest with you gimbals are a bit of a faff. They take quite a lot of time to set up and they make using the camera awkward. So I can't, in all honesty, recommend them. So for me, I need another camera, not to replace the iPhone, but to partner with it. I want something that's simple to use and very easy to carry. Now, I've recently changed to my latest camera, which is the Sony RX100 Mark 7. The main thing I like about it is the autofocus system. Whatever you point it at, it will be instantly in focus. It's really good at focusing on people's eyes. Note the little tracking box around Carol's eye. Of course, the main reason I carry this camera is for the zoom lens. It's 24 millimeters at the wide and 200 millimeters at the end of the zoom. It's really good at slow motion and this was shot at 500 frames per second. If you want to fit microphones or lights to this camera, then you're going to need a cage. I've tried a couple and this is the one that I prefer. Just make sure that you can get access to the battery and the SD card whilst it's in the cage. It's all quite a nice neat package when paired with the Rode Wireless Go. The one on the side is the receiver. The one at the top is the transmitter which can be unclipped and you can pin it to yourself and walk away and still record excellent sound. I'm really beginning to fall in love with the Rode Wireless mics. When we were doing our Q&A video, we just had one of them sat on the table in front of us. If you want sharp focus, then the best thing you can do is put your camera on a tripod. And I use the Manfrotto B3 carbon fiber because it's so light to carry. This one is perfect matched with small pocket zoom cameras. Not so good if you've got a big clunky DSLR mind. I prefer a ball head on my tripods, which makes it really easy to frame the shot. Not so good though if you want to do slow panning work. But then again, I don't tend to do much of that. The other thing I like using with this camera is this pistol grip. It was just a cheap purchase, but it turns it into more of an old fashioned style cine camera and it's really nice to hold and control. On the bottom, I've got a spare tripod mount and that means I can just click this into the tripod so that we can get into the shot if needed. I recently broke the release switch on this tripod and uh, I was really pleased to see that Manfrotto sell all the spares you may need which prevents you having to buy a complete new tripod. I also carry this little collapsible Manfrotto desktop tripod and that's really good for both this and my action camera when the big tripod is just overkill. The RX100 is not a cheap camera but it's probably one of the best cameras I have owned so far. It does have some downsides. Number one, it's not waterproof. So when it starts raining, this goes back in my pocket. It eats batteries. So I actually carry four batteries with me and I find that can carry me through a whole day's shooting, no problem. I use aftermarket batteries, which are far cheaper than the Sony versions and I've used them fine with no problems at all and they will be in the link below this video. So what do I do when it's raining and the weather is miserable? Well, this one goes back in my pocket and I pull out this one. This is the DJI Osmo Action 
and it's fully waterproof so you can use it in the pouring rain. It has a front screen so that you can see yourself when speaking to camera and a larger rear screen which is what you would normally use when filming where you are. Now if you've seen our island series in the very last episode you will see that I finally fall out of love with my two GoPro Hero 7 Blacks. They turned out to be the most unreliable cameras I have ever owned. The GoPros just simply wouldn't record but the buttons on the DJI Osmo work brilliantly and so far I've had no issues with this camera whatsoever. The inbuilt mics of the Osmo are pretty good, but if you want to add an external mic, then you're going to need a cage. This one by PGY Tech is relatively inexpensive and it gets a lot of positive reviews, so that's the one I went for. Most action cameras require an adapter to allow you to connect an external microphone and the DJI Osmo is no different. In order to attach it, you need to remove the door and it plugs here and it allows you to connect external power and a microphone. But beware, once you do this, your camera is no longer waterproof. This is what it looks like with the adapter plugged in. Now you may think, why on earth would you use a camera that was no longer waterproof? And my answer would be the Osmo Action is really good if you need to move and film. So when you're hiking or walking down steps, etc., or in a boat that's moving around, the stability on this camera is pretty good and better than on the RX100. You have to keep in mind also that the external microphones that you buy, they're not waterproof either so they just don't get used in really foul weather. Action cam batteries are small and so you'll only get about an hour out of them and that's why I pair mine with this battery handle. When in use it keeps the internal battery topped up and I find this lasts me all day when I'm making my films. When paired with the Rode Wireless Go, I find this absolutely brilliant to use. It's so compact and discreet. Here it is, married to a Rode Mini Shotgun mic. Now, let's turn my attention to the shots that get a lot of positive comments, and that is from my drone. With a drone, you're able to cover bigger distances and get your camera into positions that simply wouldn't be possible. When we're out walking, I like to send the drone ahead and have it hover and film us as we walk past. And that can save a lot of time, as then I don't need to stop, pull out the tripod and set up a static shot. I only use DJI drones, but there are many others on the market. I have so far had four of these and my latest drone is a Mavic Air 2. Now be aware if a drone weighs over 250 grams then you will have to register with the Civil Aviation Authority. I also needed to register my drone when we went to Ireland. You will also have to take a simple online test to prove that you are competent enough to operate them within the rules. Now, a lot of people fancy having a drone, but they're a little bit frightened of it. So let me talk you through the process. Now, before I even fly my drone, I always check an app called UAV Forecast. This is a brilliant app that allows you to examine areas of the countryside to see if it's safe to fly there. So let's say I wanted to fly by this green point here on the River Trent. I mark my position by holding on the screen, tap conditions and you're shown an assessment of if it's safe to fly. I can slide along the bar to see what it's going to be like later in the day. Tap the green icons at the bottom, they show you the good days to fly. There is an absolute wealth of data here. Here it's showing me the wind speeds at various altitudes. Switching to the map screen 
and zooming out, I can see all the no-fly areas and those areas that need caution. You can see that it's a very small package and uh, you'll often see me carrying this bag in my shots. So first thing you've got to do is you've got to get the drone out, take the camera safety guard off and then unfold the legs. And the DJI drones are an absolutely beautiful design and very solid. Now I'm having a good look around here, make sure there's no risks in the area, particularly dogs. Then we just pop it on the ground. The drone controller has two removable sticks for easy storage. So just pop them out from the base and screw them into these little black discs. Now I just pop open this bit at the top and pull this cable out and I'm now going to slot my iPhone and the iPhone will be my screen so that I can see what the camera on the drone is seeing. So we make sure that's in there nice and firmly. Now, don't just take off. Before you take off with a drone, you always need to do a risk assessment. Dogs are your biggest enemy when flying drones because they can run up, become excited and try to snatch it. So we never take off when we've got dogs near us. Next, we're looking for people. Then we're looking for any obstructions, power lines, overhanging trees, etc. So you want to make sure you start by taking off from a nice, clear, safe space. Never go zooming off. Wait to hear these following announcements from the drone. Take off. The home point has been updated. Please check it on the map. The home point has been updated. Once you've taken off, don't become too focused on the drone. Keep looking around you to see if there are any risks entering your area, particularly dogs. Now the drone laws say that you must keep your drone in visible sight at all times. Um, I'm quite used to flying them now, so I don't mind flying them to the point where I almost can't see them. But when you're new to this, you really should keep them very close to you and take your time and practice will make perfect. When flying the drone and filming, it's best to make graceful maneuvers and hold the course that you're flying as sometimes it can be really annoying when you're editing to find that you suddenly veer away from the subject. This is not meant to be a tutorial. What I'm trying to show you is that these are relatively easy things to fly if you know what you're doing. So now let's bring the drone back and take a look at the controls. We have two sticks to control the drone. Let's deal with the right stick first. It's easiest to fly when it's facing away from you. Push the right stick forward and the drone goes forward. Pull it back and it will come back towards you. Push the stick left, it slides to the left. Right, it slides to the right. Let's just bring it back to the center now and we'll talk about the left stick. When I push the left stick to the right, the drone begins to spin on its axis to the right, pushing it left and it would go the other way. Now here's the rub. When a drone is facing towards you, all of the controls are reversed. And so this is why you will need to practice flying the drone with what's known as nose in, the camera facing towards you. You must be able to fly it so that you don't panic if you have to suddenly turn the drone towards you and bring it back. I'm pushing the left stick left and the drone is turning to its left. If I let go of both sticks, 
the drone will just hover. And that is why if you get into trouble, the best thing you can do is let go of the sticks and just let the drone sort itself out. Push up on the left stick to make it climb. Pull down to make it sink lower. When you come into land, just keep pulling down and hold the stick down and then it will land on its own accord. This particular drone can avoid obstacles and if you're heading towards a building or a tree, it will just stop. It also has a very important return to home function should you ever lose the connection between the controller and the actual drone. Now, if you don't want to pass the test or go to the bother of registering your drone, then the best drone that you could buy is the new DJI Mavic Mini 2. That drone is under 250 grams, so you do not have to register it with the CAA. It's also half the price of the Mavic Air 2. So it's a really good drone if you want to try this out for yourself without spending too much money. In the past, I've done all of my editing on a desktop PC or a MacBook Pro. But for the last year or so, all of my films have been edited using an iPad Pro using some software called LumaFusion. LumaFusion doesn't have all the bells and whistles that you will find on a desktop editor, but the advantages are huge. iPads can easily edit several streams of 4K video at the same time. And also, it's such a pleasure to be able to sit in your favourite armchair and just edit by tapping your finger on the screen with the iPad on your lap. Just a reminder, you can find the links to all of the things I've mentioned in this video. And if you buy them through our Amazon page, we will get a small commission at no extra charge to you.